Sarah here from Core Exercise Solutions. Welcome to my office. This is where the mental magic happens. I've been getting lots of questions lately on the pelvic floor. So I just wanted to go over how the pelvic floor works, how you can get your pelvic floor to function better, and how the pelvic floor interplays with the rest of the body. So basically what I look at as an orthopedic physical therapist for getting people's pelvic floors to function better. All right, first thing is the pelvic floor. This is your pelvis, all right? This is the front, this is the back, this is your spine. Now, the pelvic floor is a sling of muscles that sits under the bottom of your pelvis. It helps to stabilize your pelvis, it helps to hold up your internal organs, prevents incontinence, and stabilizes the SI joints. All right, the pelvic floor plays a very important role in stability, which is why we need it stronger than just incontinence. All right, so when I'm looking at the pelvic floor from an orthopedic standpoint, I'm gonna want the pelvic floor resisting lateral forces on the pelvis, which helps to stabilize where your spine connects in. Think about every time you reach for a door to open it. Uh, you push a heavy piece of furniture because I know you're moving the furniture around in your living room all by yourself. So every time you go to transfer a load and you're moving stuff, you are transferring it through these poor little joints from your arms to your legs. So if all the stabilizing factors that go into helping to support your pelvis isn't there, like your pelvic floor, you're gonna end up in pain. And I see a lot of patients with SI joint pain that have weak pelvic floors and don't even know they're weak. So when we look at positioning of the pelvic floor, poor posture plays a huge role in how the pelvic floor fires. So let's say you've got slouch forward posture, all right? So it's gonna kinda tuck your butt under a little bit. That places the pelvic floor at a very disadvantaged angle to fire. So if your butt is tucked under and your posture is slouched, I know you're imagining that posture right now, then this is gonna mean your pelvic floor is probably weak. So having correct posture, having wonderful tall posture, plays a significant role in getting your pelvic floor to fire correctly. The other thing I'm gonna look at is how you breathe. All right, so if you're a very shallow breather and every time I watch you take a breath, you go and I'm watching the patient's chest rise up and down, neck and shoulders are getting involved and they're like, oh, Sarah, my neck and shoulders are always so tight, I can never get them to loosen up. Because basically they're breathing and they're using all of these accessory muscles to breathe instead of their giant diaphragm. So what happens is, is you've got the pelvic floor on the bottom, the diaphragm on the top, and the two work together. So when you take an inhale, your diaphragm goes down. Your pelvic floor should go down and relax. Think about it as a pressure canister. All right, you've got your nice little canister of pressure applied to the top, applies pressure down to the bottom. And then when you exhale, your diaphragm rises and comes back up, and your pelvic floor should rise and come back up. Now, what I see in a lot of athletes, and frankly, just rooms full of women, is I'll have women cough or blow into a balloon so they can really feel, and half of them will raise their hand and say, Sarah, when I exhaled, my pelvic floor went down, which is not the way you want the pelvic floor to move. So somewhere along the line, they just train their bodies to work improperly. Uh, could have been childbirth, could have just been straining um, when they shouldn't have been straining. Maybe they're a heavy lifter, maybe they're a CrossFit athlete and they were bearing down to strain. So they learned that as they exhaled to bear down, uh, maybe they've had some constipation, issues going to the bathroom. So these are things that we have to retrain and get them firing correctly. So when you exhale, and when you, especially when you exhale forcefully, think about that pelvic floor going back up. And this is something that I look at as being like a sport. All right, so we train muscle movement patterns in sports. Think about the last time you learned a sport, right? You had to think through every single step. All right, but after you've kind of gotten into that sport a little bit, and let's say you're playing, and let's say you learn how to play soccer or tennis, all right, you pick up that tennis racket, everything is foreign, but after you're playing for a while, it's kind of second nature, the foot positioning, where the racket goes. And the same thing happens with the pelvic floor. We get that timing down correctly, and then it starts to fire naturally, which is what we're looking for. So deep breathing, 
posture. And then the last thing I'm going to take a look at is hip strength. All right, so you've got your pelvic floor here. Well, you've got your hips right here. All right, so your hips are going to be pulling and sending sensory information and everything else to your pelvic floor and saying, hey, hey, I'm working, use me. Well, think about that elderly person that walks in the room and they've got that really shuffle gait. All right, their hips never move. It's almost like their hips are fixed, their butt is tucked under, their hips are very stuck and stable and it's never moving. All right, think about the lack of stimulation to their pelvic floor. So basically, you've got to have adequate hip range of motion and strength to really get the pelvic floor to fire. So a lot of my patients are lacking in hip strength. All right, so go home and work on these things pelvic floor strength works with work with posture deep breathing core strength to help hold up your posture and hip strength all right if you like this video please subscribe to my youtube channel and check out my website at coreexercisesolutions.com thanks a bunch